Hello. In the studio today, we have Lakshmi Mohan Babu, the first Singaporean artist to send her art to the moon, an architect, a fashion designer, an artist and an NFT creator. Lakshmi is a Singaporean artist of Indian origin, an architect, a fashion designer by training, who spent her formative years in the Soviet-occupied Afghanistan. Two of her sculptures are on the International Space Station, orbiting Earth and will reach the moon by 2025 as part of the Moon Gallery, the first extraterrestrial art gallery. Her art has been featured as a mosaic animation on the largest HD screen in the world at Singapore's SunTech Convention Center, displayed in prominent galleries and is collected worldwide. The five interactions designs now in space are being launched in the metaverse as a series of NFTs and is available on our website. Lakshmi started her career as an architect, illustrated books on disability for the Voluntary Health Association of India and the World Health Organization. She became a fashion designer, an educator and mentor at NIFT Delhi and LaSalle College of the Arts. An artist of many mediums, Lakshmi's art spans all facets of design, is multi-sensory and multidisciplinary and is an intersection of art and technology. Lakshmi uses cross-cultural influences in her work to break down barriers and communicate a universal message, one which resonates with people from all walks of life, ethnicities and beliefs. A psychological immersion into the realms of memories, culture, community, personal and relative histories, Lakshmi's work explores the intersection of art, science and technology. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and people of the world. Welcome to ZenPod once again. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome somebody who is an artist, an art student, a jewelry designer, fashion designer. Her art will actually, and, yeah, and hold on to your chair when I say, tell you this, her art will actually find a permanent residence on the moon by 2023. And some of us here are struggling to find ourselves a permanent residence on Earth. So congratulations, uh, Lakshmi, and welcome to this podcast. Well, thank you so much for inviting me today and letting me share my story. Awesome. I want to start by asking you, uh, Lakshmi, in your scheme of things, how do you define spirituality? Yeah, so we actually define our space based on, you know, within our surroundings. And, you know, with more and more interactions, you start to understand, you know, our interdependence and our interconnected kind of world. And what happens is that with these interactions, you get, you know, a greater and greater level of complexity and an infinite range of perceptions and belief systems. So for me, spirituality is finding simplicity within this complexity. I mean, I feel that this is the essence of our existence, our relationships and our connections. For me, that's spirituality. Wow. Very simply put. And I think your answer signifies the clarity you have in your thoughts. (laughs) Really (laughs) awesome, awesome. Uh, Evolution of Lakshmi Mohan Babu, please tell us, walk us through it. So basically, my first couple of years were in a Hindu country, Nepal, okay. then a secular India, then a Buddhist Himalayan kingdom, Sikkim, and then an Islamic majority country, Afghanistan, where I spent most of my formative years, which was during the Soviet occupation. And I'm Singaporean. Okay. And uh, professionally, I trained to be an architect and a designer. And uh, as an artist, I have worked in areas as diverse as the disability sector to fashion. And of course, now as a space artist, I have two of my sculptures that will be part of the first extraterrestrial gallery on the moon. That's awesome. And and we we will talk a little bit more as we go over the questions, Lakshmi. But outer space, in your opinion, I want to jump straight to this because this is the the one thing that uh, we humans, humans grapple with. Outer space, in your opinion, actually, what is it all about? For us as humans, it's anything beyond a tiny planet, <laughs> outer space. It's a, a place that no one could have dreamt of ever going to, you know, till space travel yeah. actually made it a reality. But a space, I feel, is a is a kind of relative concept. It could be the immediate space and boundaries that you define as yours, be it like volume, emotional or personal space. And that is different for different individuals and different cultures. And for us humans, like we actually have this very limited visual spectrum. So what we perceive as solid mass is really an illusion relative to our scale. And if you look at a microscopic organism, it may, uh, you know, what you see as solid might appear to be really vast space for for it based on its scale and scope of understanding. And this uh, interaction of this inner and outer space, the concept of you and a universe, is actually one of the underlying ideas in my interaction series of paintings. Yeah, I, I did look at some of your paintings as well. But but the one thing I also noticed in your paintings, and we'll talk again later in this uh, podcast, is 
they're very yeah. colorful they're very vibrant they're very bright and we'll come back to that so that's interesting uh, the first singaporean artist in space take a bow firstly how does it feel well it's been a fantastic journey because yeah. singapore is this small country a city state and known as the red dot and to have this speck of a nation as part of an event placing out on the moon for eternity i mean i feel like no emotions can express how i feel yeah. if somebody were to ask you to explain it in a, in a sentence or two sentences how would you describe the whole thing other than let's say just the emotional part of it well like i would just say it's the most fantastic you know experience <laughs> that i've had <laughs> it's, it's, it's unbelievable yeah. i'm just trying to the reason i'm asking you again is i'm trying to feel how you feel so <laughs> i'm trying to empathize the feeling it's it's such a it's such a massive thing right uh, getting something like this done is is massive so awesome uh, you are an architect you are an artist you are an illustrator a fashion designer a jewelry designer and and i've seen all your work uh, any other avatar that of lakshmi that we have missed out or are we yet to see Well I'm actually hoping that there'll be uh, you know many more of those that I can explore <laughs> so because uh, my art is really about making connections and create and also creating works that are interdisciplinary and like multisensory as well mm-hmm. so interdisciplinary like as in combining art and technology and like multisensory as in its visual tactile acoustic olfactory you know gustatory any any I mean all of your senses So I'm seeking collaborations to reinterpret my work into all of these different facets of design so it's building spaces fashion fragrances food beverage I mean all, I mean all of the things that interact with you so for example like you have like art that shelters you and also your larger space so like clothing and you know the built space or art that you can walk in and on so like shoes and floor covering so you know touch and feel like materials and textiles listen to and watch like music and and video so yeah so that is what i'm looking to you know go, go with like inter- more and more interactive art your concept and you speak about this of art with a universal appeal please do let us in on it and explain to the listeners uh, what is it that's on your mind so actually in my artwork i decided that instead of following like a style or a method of painting and in creating it i would you know pursue a thought process like one of connections and interactions because i feel that these are the linking threads that connect the fabric of humanity so when you think of like us humans we have always been wondrous and this is reflected in the parallel thinking in you know the stories we have the myths the innovations across geographical regions so be language be communication numbers belief systems and so i looked at look for simple ideas that that bind us and uh, so what i found is like all our influences and our surroundings are the same so okay. our sky the sun the moon the forces of nature the patterns that govern the universe so in the interaction series of paintings i use all of these elements it so it these paintings connect like exist existential ideas such as creation life cycles direction movement celestial bodies infinity in space time and thought so making it a global language of symbols that resonate with people of different races different faiths and different regions so in like today's world we have no boundaries no boundaries are non exist and information is like available at everyone's fingertips and yet we find that we are stuck with these morals and value systems that haven't evolved at the same pace as technology and you have a lot of the past that's lingering uncomfortably in the present cropping up in the form of like racial gender and geograph- geographical divides so i wanted my art to focus on inclusivity that leads to con- like conversations around concepts of difference and what happens is that when people of different faiths and you know of from different parts of the world tell me they you know when they go through my paintings and they say my paintings actually voice the ideals of their specific uh, belief system or region then i feel i've succeeded in what um you know what i i try to do with my paintings interesting interesting so so um, so again a related question here so which means uh, do any discussions or do any uh, sites or or views inspire you to uh, go out go come back and do a painting or an art uh, so yeah so i do so uh, most of my art follows this uh, this idea of like right. inclusive Uh, concepts right but there are times when i just feel like i i do not want it to be uh you know like research based uh, art where right. i just want to draw you know a pretty right. painting it's a nice landscape or, you know so yeah i do do that also awesome your philosophy on art and design like art and design 
coexist in Correct. the space we, in, we inhabit, the objects we interact with, and also the stories we tell. Mm-hmm. And we, of course, we all of us, we want to communicate and express with words, express with colors, shapes, and forms. So my philosophy is to create a blend of art, science, and technology to create spaces, uh, those of like not just volume, but expression and emotion that interact with our senses. Awesome. And have you, uh, would you say... Uh... You have succeeded on it, or is there still a long way to go? Well, there's always a long way to go, but mm-hmm. there have been a few successes. So even with my art going to the moon, it's uh, like one of them, uh, but actually both of them, they have been technology collaborations with NT Singapore here. Awesome. I know as part of your uh, growing up or your, your formative years, you, you did spend quite a bit of time in uh, Afghanistan and uh, not the easiest of places to live in. So I'm sure there must have been moments in your life, Lakshmi, when you had to battle probably multiple challenges or I would say severe challenges. Are there one or two that actually stand out uh, in, in your head when you look back after all these years? Well, uh, I personally, for me, the for living in Afghanistan was actually a very inter- very interesting and a very uh, a, a beautiful experience. Oh, really? Yeah, so I did actually, of course, living there, I realized that obviously that was the case for me, but not for the people who lived in Afghanistan who right. obviously uprooted from their, you know, from their country, their families, their homes. But I had a great existence there in, in spite of that. It was leaving Afghanistan that I found more traumatic. Um, oh. But having said that, like my biggest uh, battle, I mean, is uh, especially as an artist or has been, you know, battling preconceived notions, you know, being boxed based on race, gender, and, you know, there's a whole list of that. And but what but what I that is one of the reasons when you know I thought that my art should address these issues like these uh, issues of bias and uh, you know perceptions, and so I feel like it's been inspirational in a way. Did you have any particular instances when when people actually came to you or people spoke to you in different gatherings and and you felt that you were severely limited or challenged? Uh, because you couldn't do something. Actually, a lot of times. I mean, it's, it's not been one. It's, it was. Okay. It's like a constant battle. Okay. And I, I kind of realized that uh, you know, you just. It's difficult to get people to listen to you or you know understand your point of view. It's it's right. like being boxed in, and you know you don't even have a chance to. Uh, you don't have an outlet to express yourself. You have created some, and I'm, this is linked to the first question I asked you. You have created some exquisite work, um, and I've seen some of them on your website. Uh, whether it be your painting or your jewelry, in, in all of this, does spirituality and you may call it inner power, to, to borrow your definition, simplicity, um, does it have a bearing on your final outcome or the final product, Lakshmi? Yeah, because I feel like I, I need to, when I'm creating, I, I do not want to be restricted in any way, nor do I want to be influenced. I mean, of course, we are all influenced in a certain way by our surroundings and people and you know, all, all that, but not forced influence or anyone dictating the direction that I take, uh, especially when I'm, you know, working on my art. Right. That is something I would do as, as inner power. This question is for me a very important question and probably the, the crux of all our discussion. And I love this though, not knowledgeable enough to understand the depth of it and which is why I'm going to ask you it. Your cube of interaction, uh, fantastic work. And I, you know, I'm very, very impressive. Can you please spend some time and tell the listeners and me actually the thought behind it and, and how did the whole thing came about? Uh, so, so actually, like I said earlier, <laughs> I, I'm always looking for like simplicity within complexity and, right. uh, and also ideas that bind people, you know, so where when people of any background, any faith, when they actually, you know, understand the concepts behind it, they'll say, oh, actually that does belong to me you know that's that's my belief system whatever that belief system is and so that was the kind of conversation I wanted where someone would say you know what that is that is what you know we are about or you know sometimes they'll include me okay so my interactions cubes were really based on my those concepts of the interactions uh paintings so it's a connect between people of all faiths and races and it's got a number of like yeah these universal concepts Uh, so things like uh you know, when you talk about creation, so it's the floral forms. I've used this floral form to symbolize like life cycles, birth, life, death, new beginnings. I used uh, arrows. So all of these concepts are within that single cube, those, those cubes. So I use arrows because arrows are really like solar symbols that depict movement and the passage of time. 
The other thing I've done with the with the cubes is, is that they have two very distinct sides. There's just a single shape that the positive shape that defines the outline or the form of the the non-existent uh, negative space. And so this is like the interaction of the inner and outer space. You know, the idea of you and the universe, the yin and the yang, the negative and the positive. Right. Right. And uh, so it also shows this complementary interdependence where one cannot exist without the other. I have a single like contiguous line that starts and ends at the same point. So this is really to convey like infinity and recurring life cycles. Besides all of these like shapes and forms, I have a like, number of connections with numbers. And again, very simple, mm. basic ideas. So you have the central pivot point or axis mm-hmm. that represents unity. Mm-hmm. So the negative... Uh, and positive side shapes, like that's a duality. You know, you've got two sides, negative and positive. And the arrows really are triangular headed. So they they are actually trinities. You have a number of t- trinities, but of course, like you, one of the interesting ones are like creation. You know, everyone's created, you're preserved. You stay, you, you know, there's impermanence. You, you, you stay for a certain period and then obviously then you die or you, you're destroyed. The square face of the cube uh, represents like quaternity of direction. And all of these uh, shapes have got like a radiating pattern about a single focus. So this radiating circular pattern is, you know, like because the circles are like, you know, it, you can see it's uh, plurality, right? So that's like the plurality of all our belief systems. There's an infinite number of them because even even when people think that they follow the same belief system, I think each individual actually defines their own belief system as like a subset of whatever that is. And that's yeah, interesting. So, that, so yeah, so that's all the concepts within that those cubes uh, it has these underlying concepts so and and when you work with them do you um, trying to understand this do you actually work on them as silos and then put them together or do you actually have the complete value chain and then you build on them so actually i started all the i started work on the interactions paintings you know like almost like 30 years ago so oh. it hasn't been like an, like uh, you know i got all this inspiration in one in you know in a few minutes it it was things that i built on you know over the years and I said well you know this I, this is a really interesting idea or this is a really good aspect that I could include in it so it it has been built over years and years and years so it, yeah and most of my work is like that I just feel like my art is not something that I can create overnight because right. it is something that builds I might right. change direction I follow the direction it's the better path so 90% of the work that I do is really in the the thinking process and it's probably only 10 percent is the actual <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. some of the work you've created is surreal uh, absolutely and we have a painting at home by uh, the maestro dali uh, you know those long paintings so yeah. um, it took us quite some time to understand it and i don't think we still understand it uh, but we have it at home so that's a different discussion um, when you when you do stuff like this uh, lakshmi is there is there a different zone you step into I mean, spiritually or otherwise, or 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 is it just part of life for you? But to some degree, it's part of life. But yeah, I <laughs> find that the, like I do feel like when I'm working on something, I I like I need to be alone. Okay. I cannot work in in groups. Okay. I I, I want to be absolutely undisturbed, no interruptions, no uns, unsolicited advice. That's something uh, that I know doesn't help me in any way. And so, of course, I would I do actually have phases where you know I cut off from people for like quite long durations of like periods of time or well, you could call it like yeah stepping into a different zone yeah. yeah awesome as an artist we are we are common people we buy art sometimes uh, we um, spend money on a lot of trivial things if you may so we are the gallery we are the masses if you were to explain art uh, or if as an artist if you want uh, me to understand your point of view are there any techniques you deploy or or how do you have a conversation so, yeah, I've actually found it very difficult to explain my work. Uh, not that it's difficult. I've, I've actually found it very easy to explain my work, but okay. it, it takes me a lot of time to explain that. Right. And that's actually one of the challenges I've had, you know, when approaching galleries because, you know, pe- people don't have the time. It's a fast-paced world. And yes. they expect you to, you know, explain within a sentence, maybe two, what you have in mind. And if, you, if it doesn't, I mean, if you can't do that, then they, they are like, you know, I'm, I'm sorry because art has to speak for itself. And the truth is art does not speak for itself. You right, do need right. some context. You do need some, some background. Correct. And uh, so that has actually been one of the biggest challenges that I've faced to get someone to give me a year to listen to, you know, what I have to say. And people listen to what you have to say if you're recognized. But if you're not, then that's a huge struggle because they're not really interested in Correct. what you're saying. 
having said that, I've had I have managed to get galleries who did find my work interesting, oh, and, very, and including the the Moon Gallery. So I would say <laughs> as, as many years as Nisa is, you know, like it's, I've had enough people who have seen value in my work, and that has obviously helped. But it has been extremely challenging to explain it. And what I did do also was that while I was working. Uh, like you were saying about Dali, like, you know, artists paint, uh, they make a, create a painting. And what happens is the viewer feels that they don't understand it and they are somehow not intellectual enough to understand that. And that is an aspect that I actually, did, you know, thought I had to deal with, like when, with my art, like I didn't want someone to come and say that I didn't understand it. So at every process, every, at every stage, I would simplify my work by, with explanations. And which is why, you know, even on my website, I have very clear, detailed explanations mm. of why I've done something, why are there arrows, or why is there something. So when someone actually reads it, it's very, very clear what it's about. And what was interesting was like when I initially made the paintings, like I said, it's a single contiguous line that starts and ends at the same point. And it, it was a concept that even though I, I thought it looked, it was pretty obvious people would say mm-hmm. I don't see. so I created line animations to show that which is there on my, oh, on my website right the, those were picked up by the Suntech design team for the Suntech screen where they used the line animations along with the paintings and that created this very interesting video so I found that there has been this because I've been trying to explain my paintings it's kind of led to different parts that have been you know you know interactive and interesting yeah but but then uh, does your explanation uh, not yours generally does an explanation take away the essence of the painting sometimes? Uh, It depends on the kind of painting you do. So I do feel that, you know, like if I'm doing a really pretty landscape, I mean, I might not really need to come and say, well, that is a pretty landscape and that's a huge wave and that's a huge big tree and that's such and such. Because then you you actually feel like, you know, you just like looking at it because it's a pretty landscape. But for my, so I do feel like every artist it's an indiv- as an individual has a different kind of expression or a different idea that they want to express. So, so it's all relative to what you're doing. And I, as an artist, can only express the way I, I can. And I cannot force the, the viewer to perceive in right. the manner I want them to. They are going to take away what they understand. It might be completely different from what I, I planned. And that is something I can't control. So that's very interesting. So, you know, you, you spoke a little while ago about uh, explaining your work to a gallery or getting them to understand. And I'm sure you've done this multiple times. Does it, has it at any point of time kind of frustrated you or, or made you believe that you are actually banging your head against a wall? Many times, actually. Lots and lots and lots of times I've, okay. I've felt that. Uh, like I said, usually they would have had the time to, to listen. Because right. if, if you can't explain it in, in two sentences, then they're like, what's the point, you know? Uh, but I have had interesting situations where, you know, I've gone and explained and, you know, people have kind of gone through, like like you said, you did go through. And and they'd come back and say, you know, we changed our mind completely, you know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I've had that. I mean, that's actually been the reason wow. I, you know, wow. the interaction series have actually become more recognized and all that. But it's because there have been the, the one or two people who have seen something in it, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, that's, that's nice. That's nice. That, that. Colors. What part do they play in our life, according to you? Oh, I think all kinds. And even though, yeah, it's like even a like a visual spectrum is actually quite limited. Our color spectrum is quite limited. Right. Even in spite of that, like we have like an infinite array of colors to choose from. And yet, like everyone's perception of color is different. And it's that you have different, you know, color association. It could be cultural. It could be individual. There's so many factors, you know, that play with that colors play with in in, in your life. So, you know, like when you talk about cultural associations, you could have, uh, it's so different. So white could be the, you know, the color of celebration and weddings in some cultures. Oh, morning colors. Correct. Black, a morning color or you know, sophistication and glamour. So blue could be with you know, calm, green for fertility. I mean, so you have all these color associations, but these are cultural associations. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, based on availability. So like you have like purple, which is associated with royalty, which is so difficult to get the dye of purple. Then the other thing that colors do is that it also, you know, your perception of scale and space is also based on color. So, you know, you have colors that are advancing and your colors that are receding. So when you have like advancing colors, it makes a space or a form look much larger, like the colors like yellow and white. And then yes. if you have dark colors, deep blue or black or something, you feel like it's, it's receding. So it's, it makes the shape look uh, smaller. And you can use these, uh, you know, this play of color along with like scale and re- repetition. You can use it to create optical illusions. So it's all using just color. 
And so in my in the interaction series of paintings, what I did was I used the, the color wheel because the color wheel again has its own classification Correct. Of, Correct. of colors. So you have like primary, secondary, tertiary, right. and right. Of tertiaries. So what I did was I used the tertiary color, the, the triad on the color wheel to, to create my paintings. So all the paintings are based on, on triads. Mm -hmm. So I used like a single form with uh, the same form in three different colors to also highlight the fact that the same form is gives you a certain, you know, you can relate to a certain form, either culturally or geographically. You, you feel like that form has a certain meaning for you. But when I change the color of that form, the same form, your perception of it changes. So that is how I use oh. color in the interaction series. And so the interaction series has literally got all the colors of the, the main colors on, on the on the color wheel. So yeah, so that's how you know colors can change your wow. you know wow. your, your life literally. Seriously. And, and your favorite color? Any any <laughs> I do not have one. <laughs> I, like ah, ah, I was expecting this. <laughs> is that is that a real answer or, or are you just being Fair no, to no. all the colors. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's like the whole the whole inclusivity idea is there even in colors. I do feel like I have an equal, you know, um, uh, I have my days when I like certain colors. I like the non-colors, like you know, the neutral colors you know, yeah. as well. So, yeah. Awesome. So, there are a lot of youngsters, you call them Generation Y or the Generation Z, um, who, who have obviously read about your work, are reading about your work and, and would aspire to follow your footsteps. And there are many of them, from, even from non artistic fields what would your message be to them uh, Lakshmi considering you've gone I, through so many different uh, I actually find that they are much more you know they're not as rigid as say the yes. older generation you know and informing opinions and judgments and yeah like my message really would be like explore all opportunities and avenues that that come your way and uh, talking about them like one of my best experiences was being you know, just randomly contacted by, an, you know, a girl from Germany. And she's just 17 years old. And she wanted wow. to do an interview. Oh, how sweet. And it was wonderful. And she was one yeah. of the most professional people I'd come across. Oh, nice. She had researched my work thoroughly. And, you know, she framed the questions beautifully. Lovely. And, yeah, it was. And, and when I did that interview, I felt the interaction series had done exactly what I wanted to achieve. Like, beautiful. my idea was to you know, start conversations with people of all age groups and all, you know, all walks of life from all, you know, all parts of the world. And when, with that interview, I felt like, you know, I had done that. I, it, you know, I had achieved what I had wanted to do. Brilliant. I mean, that's very encouraging, isn't it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Where do you draw your energy and creativity from? So I find that, yeah, any interesting creative work, you know, get, gives me the energy to like keep moving forward. Okay. And, for me, like uh, it's this constant like observation and analysis that I get my you know that gives you that creative energy. If you were let's say wake you wake up one morning and you're not feeling on top of the world, and you still had to do some work on your on, on one of your cubes or some things, how do you how would you then draw your creativity? Well, the yeah most of my work I've not really felt like uh, <laughs> I was <laughs> because yeah it really does keep me going. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, if I do kind of get a, get to a place where I find that I'm, you know, I've got a block, mm -hmm. I, I start looking for. So I do keep a lot of records and inspirational material, yeah. like okay. In, okay. images in little, little like words and notes and things like that. So I, I actually browse through that to just you know get going, okay. and it usually helps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What has been uh, your eureka moment? Well, for me, I think the eureka <laughs> moment finding that the interactions uh, series fitted perfectly with the idea of, you know, the out, outer space and, you know, the whole moon gallery concept. And yeah, really like going beyond a planet with, you know, the first step on the moon. Yeah, that was, the, yeah, the, the, it was. That really must have been your jumping from the bathtub moment, I'm sure. Brilliant, isn't it? And and how did you get to know of it? So tell us the story. I mean, did somebody call you or did you get a mail or I'm curious. <laughs> It was an unusual story where someone who was actually following my art introduced me because I, I met up with him and over coffee and he said, your work has got to be on the moon. You know? Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. So that, it was quite an unusual sort of uh, oh my story. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Who has been your inspiration, uh, Lakshmi? Well, I, for me, like, everything is inspirational, like a conversation is inspirational. Like, for, it's really the surroundings, my life, my interactions with people. Uh, and 
loads and loads of people and observing people, conversations, reflecting on that, analyzing it. Uh, I, I use all of that in my art. Every interaction brings me some new, uh, new source of inspiration. Awesome. You have carved out a space for yourself in outer space or the universe as we call it. 20, 30, 40 years from now, what would you like to be remembered on Earth for? Planet Earth that we all live on. I want to be remembered as a Singaporean artist on the moon. (laughs) Whose art started conversations, you know, like art with a message of inclusivity that interacted with people from all walks of life, all age groups in all kinds of ways. Beautiful. Really, really nice. Can can I do a rapid fire with you now so that we... <laughs> sure, yeah. Awesome, awesome, good. So you can tell what the following mean to you. Colors are? What you perceive. Okay, that's very interesting. Art is? An expression of thought, form, space. Uh, design is? Functional art. Oh, beautiful. And you know, it's uh, it's it's... It's very interesting. I, I One of my guests um, sometime back was um, Tim Kobe. He's, again, he lives in Singapore. He uh, he was the one who designed the first Apple store, retail Apple store, and also is designing the Notre Dame. And he, he said something very, very similar to what you're saying about design, you know, and uh, he spoke about the human element and he spoke about anthropology and all of that. So it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Space is? Relative to scale. Okay. And primary colors are? Red, blue, yellow. <laughs> I expected a very complicated answer. <laughs> okay, Lakshmi is Let's say over the moon. Really? Uh, if if there were if there were your book were uh, is probably the last question. But if your book had ten chapters, or if your life was a book and it had ten, 10 chapters, uh, Lakshmi, uh, what is the one chapter that you would want people to read over and over again? I think really the chapter on the moon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the chapter on the moon and the interactions concept, yeah. And what would you want them to take away? Uh, whether it's a it's a kid, it's somebody in the middle age group or a senior citizen. What is it that you would want them to take away after that? So yeah, it's this whole idea of inclusivity where we are always going to be different, We no matter what. And you are going to always have biases. You're always going to have perceptions that are going to be different for different people. But the end, at the end of the day, I do feel that when you have discussions around these topics, you know, you just, you're not going to have a perfect tomorrow, but you're going to have a better tomorrow. Awesome. Awesome. Your, your jewelry work, and I'm, I'm going back into our discussion, your jewelry work has been inspired by, uh, you, you, you mentioned cultures of Afghanistan and the people living there and all of that. Uh, would you want to tell us a little bit about it? So actually, even when I, even, even for the jewelry, I kind of follow the same, the same path where okay. I do not like to create a piece of jewelry that you know, follows a particular style or, you know, fits into a certain kind of uh, form. But I pick up pieces from different parts of the world and then I try and again mix them to see what okay. I can create. So that it's, uh, so in the creation of that, you find that it's just like inspiration. You can't say that I'm a unique person and I, you know, I created something that's 100% original because I feel like we are all uh, lifting off, you know, what has been done in the past. So, you know, if, if I'm painting as an artist, someone has actually made the paint or someone actually invented that or someone mm-hmm. you know, created a canvas. So Very interesting. But it's your expression of it, which is, which is different from someone else's. And that is what I like to do with all my work, that my expression is, is unique to me. So, yeah, even with my jewelry, that's the, that's the pattern I follow. And, and do, you, do you actually spend a lot of time creating or curating each piece? I do. So okay. it's like the it's like the paintings. I I might start with a piece and then mm-hmm. you know I'm not happy with what it looks like. And I okay. I'm just discarded. I'm not I'm Oh discarded. really? I, oh I just put God. it aside. I put it aside. So I have I have a lot of pieces which I would have started thirty years ago, forty, I mean twenty and you know, tons and tons of pieces. But then my I God. have it in my head and at some point when I feel like I really have the idea for that particular piece, I take it out and I finish it. Oh, and I'm happy, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy that I've done that. So in a way, even the interactions paintings kind of work like that. It was something I started a long time ago, but I keep you know, bringing, taking it out and saying, okay, I'll add that, I'll add that. And I'm really happy that I just feel like it was destined to have you know, a life at this point in time, yeah. not 20 years ago. Awesome. It wouldn't awesome. be the same thing, yeah. But then wouldn't you look at it differently when you pull it out after 10 years? That's the point. That ah, okay. I would look at it differently when I pull it out after 10 years, which I might not have, I wouldn't have seen what I saw, uh, what I'm seeing now, I wouldn't have seen 20 years ago. Awesome. Such an enriching and uh, fulfilling conversation, uh, Lakshmi, really. When I, when I started this conversation, I was impressed about the work you've done and, you know, the uh, uh, 
using the different uh, science and maths and other geometric concepts and explain it very beautifully but i think as i'm winding down the podcast there are there are so many more facets to you <laughs> that you must go and update your website one for sure <laughs> find time to do it number one number two i think i don't know whether you already do it but you must try and reach out to uh, or i'm sure they are university students be it in art or science or liberal arts and speak to them uh, about uh, you know uh, about the way you think about colors and the way you think about geometry and, and and be it infinity or plurality or singularity or any one of those uh, there is so much clarity and i think just you are explaining to them will make such a big difference uh, genuinely you should do that because uh, the world needs it uh, the generation okay. y needs it really so i and, think uh, I, i would like to do that yeah, yeah i will you, you must do that it's it's a brilliant thing and at some point of time if you uh, if you want somebody to write a book drop me a note and uh, a message and i would love to start writing a book on you it's really awesome and and we can oh, ti- time it to release it on 2023 when uh, your <laughs> your art is going to be on the moon <laughs> so oh, uh, seriously so i want to thank you very much for your time uh, i hope it's been uh, uh, creative and worth your time uh, spending with us but thank you very much and if there is any message you want to give to the view listeners before we close down well thank you so much i i mean i have to thank you for letting me share all my oh, work i love sharing it anyway but yeah to always share you know i it's it's an opportunity that, that i really enjoy thanks a lot you have a lovely day and stay safe and hope you get to travel soon <laughs> thank you so to you yeah Oh, if you come day. to Dubai do give me a call and would love to host you. Likewise if you come to Singapore. Yeah, I will I will yeah. surely call you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.